Good afternoon all. We call this press briefing to order and ask that um, we put our phones on the silent mode and um, request journalists to bring forward their uh, recorders, please. Just a few seconds for that. Bring forward your recording gadgets. On this note, I ask that we observe individual silent prayer, please. Amen. Amen. I'd like to welcome you to the Ministry of Information and Communication. This is our usual uh, weekly national press briefing. And happy to inform that we are also on social media. And those watching us on Facebook, uh, viewers out there as well. And um, the program, I believe, is also covered by various radio and television stations around the country, which will be aired later on. As usual, as usual, um, we'll begin with our weekly updates for this week. The First Lady of the Republic of Sierra Leone, Madam Fatima Madabio, was today officially awarded as the African Champion for Sanitation and Hygiene for the African Minister's Council on Water, AMCAO, under the African Union. The award ceremony was graced by His Excellency President Julius Madabio at State House this morning. The government of Sierra Leone, through the Ministry of Mines and Mineral Resources and the National Minerals Agency, on Monday this week launched the geodata survey obtained from the Geophysical Airborne Survey done in 2019, which was supported by the World Bank. The geodata survey was aimed at unearthing the mineral potentials of Sierra Leone in terms of location and quantity. It will also serve as a guide for potential investors in the mineral sector. It could be recalled that President Bio promised to sanitize the mining sector and make it attractive for both national and international investors. It is believed that the Geodata Survey will actualize the aspiration and vision of President Bio in transforming the mining sector for the good of the nation and its citizenry. The Deputy Minister of Finance too, Sheko Fantamadi Bangora, has engaged stakeholders in a consultative forum to discuss issues related to the management of plastic pollution in Sierra Leone at the Ministry's conference room at George Street in Freetown. In his statement, Mr. Bangora said the Ministry of Finance is providing leadership and support towards the successful implementation of the Sierra Leone's economic diversification project and other projects that are aimed at addressing the issues of plastic waste pollution in the country. The German ambassador, Horst Gunner, has held a meeting with the Minister of Tourism and Cultural Affairs, Dr. Memunatu Pratt, where he expressed interest to support the restoration of monuments with specific reference to the old Furabe College edifice. Citing the minister's presentation during the tour of the old FBC edifice, 
with the president, he expressed delight and courage to say that the German government will contribute towards the restoration of the old FBC edifice, noting that he was already he has already informed the German authorities in Berlin and has received a positive feedback. The Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development has held a day retreat for regional provincial administrative staff across the country on the theme, Strengthening Regional Provincial Administration for Effective Service Delivery. The retreat, which targeted resident ministers, provincial secretaries, district officers, and central chiefdom administrative clerks, was chaired by the Deputy Minister of um, Local Government and the Rural Development Med Rules Committee. And lastly, the Ministry of Finance has refuted a Facebook post making the rounds on social media platforms that the Ministry, Global Entrepreneurship Network and IMF are issuing the sum of 41.4 million US dollars as financial grant to all qualified entrepreneurs, businessmen and women, fishermen and farmers as fake as, and misleading. A release from the ministry states that the ministry has not has done not such a program or project for potential beneficiaries. That ends our update for this week, and for the rest of the program, for the introduction of our guests we have here today, uh, the deputy minister of information and communication, uh, Mr. Solomon Jamil, we introduce our speaker, and he will share the rest of the session. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Ture. I will advise um, the leader of the delegation from the ministry to, from NMA, to perform that task so that it becomes um, seamless and very clear. Um, mine is just to em emphasize, as a precursor to the main presentation, that we are fully aware it pleased His Excellency the President to have done the honors of doing the formal launch of the geodata survey survey and we believe that will be a tremendous game changer these are interesting times and we feel very pr privileged to be living in this era um, just to put things within a proper policy perspective we are fully aware that um, the administration had done the medium-term national development plan and in cluster two which talks about diversifying the economy and promoting growth Specifically, cluster 2.6 speaks to the sector that is fully represented here, the mines and mineral sector. Um, that sector speaks about improving management of mineral resources. And when His Excellency the President was doing the formal opening of the fourth parliament of the Fifth Republic, he also mentioned how important it is for the administration to enhance the legal and regulatory environment for the mineral sector and also spoke to the importance of improving governance transparency and accountability so as a government and we believe that um, uh, the people of sierra leone as well could reckon with this for us it was the event that we witnessed the launch of the survey has such a monumental significance and we believe that for PR purposes, it's important for us to deepen and broaden education around this. And so we feel very delighted that we have the Deputy Director General for the NMA with us, who has led a team um, of men and women with stature representing that agency and by extension, the Ministry of Mines and Mineral Resources. It's my pleasure to call on the Deputy Director General of NMA to come and introduce himself and the rest of the team, and the floor will be yours for your major presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Deputy Minister, and um, good afternoon to all. My name is Dr. Kevin Anderson, and I'm the Deputy Director General of the NME. Um, I'll allow my colleagues to introduce themselves, starting with... Um, Feel free to use your... Good afternoon. Um, Peter, 
Good afternoon, I'm Jaya Tussamoa, Communications Manager, National Air Agency. Good afternoon, I'm Mohamed Bach, Chief Inspector of Mines. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Chairman, Honorable Deputy Minister of Information and Communications, members of the Fourth Estate, colleagues from the NMA and the Ministry of Mines and Mineral Resources, I bring you greetings from the Director General of the NMA, Mr. Julius Matai, who is unavoidably absent. Let me start by registering our thanks and appreciation to His Excellency, retired Brigadier Julius Madabio, President of the Republic of Sierra Leone, for gracing the Geodata launch and exhibition with his presence and for his tremendous support for the mines and minerals sector. Special thanks also go to the various companies that sponsored the event. Their contribution was invaluable in bringing our ideas and plans for the launch to fruition. The Geodata launch and exhibition mark the dawn of a new era in the mines and mineral sector in Sierra Leone, one in which Sierra Leoneans will know the full extent of the country's geology and mineral potential. One of the key policy action points in Cluster 2.6 of the Sierra Leone Medium Term National Development Plan is to undertake a countrywide airborne geophysical survey, that is, Cluster 2.6.5. The government aims to significantly increase the revenue generated from the mines and mineral sector for the maximum benefit of the people of Sierra Leone. A significant step in this direction is understanding the country's mineral potential as this will lead to the discovery of new deposits and potential extensions of known deposits. The airborne geophysical data forms a vital component of the country's strategy to encourage investment in the mines and mineral sector by positioning the country as an exciting destination for investors they can quickly and confidently select prospective areas for mining license application at a significantly reduced cost. The Nationwide Airborne Geophysical Survey outcome will assist in mapping and securing new resources for development, employment creation, economic growth, and accelerated transformation. Such information will attract credible investors to ensure the sector's leading role in the country's financial and transformational development. With the completion of the Airborne Geophysical Survey, the NMA and the Ministry of Mines and Mineral Resources are now soliciting funds to undertake comprehensive nationwide geochemical and geological surveys and a follow-up airborne electromagnetic survey to augment the outputs to strengthen geoscientific knowledge in the mines and mineral sector. These efforts will lead to complete, that is, quanti quantitative, qualitative, and special mineral resource information, illuminating geological thinking for decades to come. The geochemical survey will build on data generated by the geophysical survey 
and potentially transform geophysical anomalies into actual prospects. Such knowledge will form a vital component of the country's strategy to encourage investment by helping interested investors further customize the interpretations and help position Sierra Leone as an exciting destination for explorers by providing the ability to manage and process reliable geoscientific data. The enemy has embarked on marketing the survey deliverables to the global mining community. Investors should be aware that Sierra Leone has generated one of the best high-resolution countrywide geophysical data coverage in the world due to its close line spacing and low ground clearance. To effectively do this, the enemy has developed an improved, standardized, integrated, and interoperable enterprise geoscientific information management system, that is the EGIMS to provide transparent, accessible, and up-to-date geoscientific data and information on exploration and mining license, including fiscal and community development information related to the management and administration of mineral rights. In collaboration with the Ministry of Mines and Mineral Resources, the NMA has also developed the NMA Strategic Plan 2020 to 2025 which has goals and strategies aligned with Sierra Leone's medium-term national development plan. This strategic plan provides a formalized management tool and roadmap that spells out how the enemy will generate resources, prioritize its financial needs, and focus its resources and time in communicating and implementing the chosen strategies. This will ensure Sierra Leone's mineral resources are utilized and manage productively to support equitable and sustained national development and poverty reduction. To this end, we are appealing to all Sierra Leoneans, including the fourth estate, to join us in this transformational march for increased revenue generation and sustainable development, ensuring that all Sierra Leoneans finally benefit from our God-given mineral wealth. Thank you. And with that, I will invite um, the Geological Survey and the Directorate of Technology and Information Management teams to do a short presentation wherein um, they will explain about the geophysical data and its benefit to the country. Thank you very much. Just before my brother takes the podium, I will encourage, please, if we just um, fully mask up. We're still in the COVID era, please. Thank you. The Honorable Deputy Minister of Information and Communications, colleagues from the Ministry of Mines and the NMA, for the estate. What's the time now? Good morning, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, um, <clears throat> I just want to quote exactly from what the Honorable Minister just said. It is but necessary to educate people around the airborne geophysical survey. The data has been collected, the planes were flown, the data have been collected, but um, there seems to be some mismatch of um, what we see and what the fourth estate of the, pub the public are saying. Airborne geophysical survey, it's uh, pretty much um, taking into, into account the shape, the size, and the depth of magnetic bodies. Please note the shape, the size, and the depth of magnetic bodies. There are other means of, um, if you want to get the volume, there are other means of um, exploration tool that you can use to get volumes. So please take note. My name is Joseph Levy. I'm the Deputy Director of Geological Survey. Um, I will take you through the contents, which um, why we decided to fly the Airborne Geophysical Survey 
data, available data set, the past and present, management and dissemination of the data, then marketing. But um, we've structured this in a way that um, I will just speak on the point one and point two, then my colleague will come and speak on the um, point three. Then uh, we've got our technical expert in house also, Tim Archer, who will come and just throw light on the, the marketing plans that we have. Why we decided to fly the airborne geophysical survey? This is just a way of measuring key physical and geochemical parameters of the app by either aircraft or some other means. It can be done through drones, magnetometers, ground magnetometers, or by aircraft. Next slide. Um, we're just repeating some of the slides that we did a um, couple of days ago at the, the conference there. So um, this is just a quick and for you to just grab some of the concepts that we we we, um, we have into the slides and from previous and, and current. Um, on the left there, can you come back please? Yeah. On the left, on the right of that slide um, is the fixed wing aircraft that we used. That particular that particular aircraft was used on our survey, and um, on the right is a helicopter. This can fly and uh, within very short time and um, for very large areas. So it was advantageous that we used um, the fixed wing. We didn't have enough um, geology. Our geology was pretty empty. If you can take a look at that map on your right, the pinkish colored map there, we had a geology that wasn't quite interesting. I mean, if you just take a deep look into the southern part of that, uh, you see that some areas haven't got um, any structures. They're pretty empty, they're just a kind of picture. So you cannot really rely on the, some of those maps for any serious investment. Although that's what we had, that's what we were using, all this while, mm -hmm. and uh, you can imagine the pain people um, went through to um, develop their minds. It was um, bare naked. We relied on the, um, historic evidence, and up till now, we were relying on historic evidence. So what we did was we decided to put in the, um, through the, the World Bank, to put in um, programs that we cover the entire country, and one such program that we did was the Airborne Geophysical Survey. So when the planes fly, um, they have the they can measure anything that is beneath the earth that has magnetic properties. So very old papers, very old and um, overseas memo memoirs, uh, bulletins, and uh, geological survey reports that you can hardly find anything within those ones that um, is of any geoscientific background. So all we depended on was um, historic evidences, and those was they were not enough to actually attract um, bigger companies or people that can can actually reduce the time of exploration work. Yeah, the. You can see that that was the very first geology map we had in 1920. That's just, that's a joke. But then, no technology hasn't improved yet. And uh, you can see that it's not really telling you anything. It's just seeing streams and uh, lines going across. They tried to improve it a little bit in 1952. You can see someone who was trying to do some coloring and coloring. 1960, so it's beginning to get some some form of sense out of it. You see in the center there, the, these are the green stone beds right down into the south. So they only focused on the center and northern part of Sierra Leone and the southeast, and the rest was pretty empty. That's from 1960. We only had the opportunity to improve that geology map 
in 2004. That's exactly what you have in 2004. You, you can barely count the legend. So it's very empty in the south southeast towards um, Liberia. There you can see some structures and in the middle and just north of um, the country. Then came the geophysics. We divided the country into 10 sheets. That was um, for certain reasons. We wanted to link all those sheets together to see um, their geological complexity. For instance, um, because the solar mountain is running all the way from north to south, we wanted to know what's the relationship between those two sheets. If we want to map or we want to prioritize areas, we can easily do, do, do that by selecting any of the sheets that is of interest. Um, we also wanted to know how the whole thing is panning out. Um, then we also want to have a kind of very innovative way of, um, of, of pushing out the data to the public. So for larger companies, you can decide to get the whole of the country. For smaller companies or junior companies, you can have just what you can you can to make um, your meaningful exploration. Um, two set of areas there. Um, on the right, um, the blank sheets um, in those boxes. These are pretty much on the eastern side of the country. And that's a different, um, is a one particular geology that extends all the way to the Kailan area. And uh, moving towards the west, it's covered by uh, um, Cenozoic material or tertiary to recent material. That's uh, just as you live in Waterloo, going towards um, um, Upper Hill, you realize that even the, the color of the soil there is brown. And that's it's um, clay or sandy. So we, in that particular area, was so difficult to understand because it wasn't revealing anything, even from the historic um, papers. So we, we are also focusing on that particular area to see exactly what's, um, what's underneath it. So when the two merge, then you have the basement on, on that side. On, on, the, on the left of that is the basement, on, and on the east is the sufficial. But on the east, because of the nature of the geology there, the sufficial becomes the basement. Four products that we have. Sufficient geology that I just explained to you. We've got maps on that. One is to 250 Italian scale and uh, one is to 750 Italian scale. We've got base bed map. I also made mention of that just now. Uh, we've got mineral appearance map that we used machine learning to um, generate some of these targets. And um, some data we had from our database was fed into the to the um, training model, and we are able to generate um, about four or five. And minerals that actually coincided with our pre knowledge of what we, we, we already knew. Kimalite and, and um, iron targeting, Kimalite targeting and iron ore wasn't, didn't quite fit well into the model, so we, we, that was done manually. The image there that you see is coming from the magnetic sensor, host of them. A lot of them. Um, we've got a lot of transformative images, um, total magnetic intensity and analytical um, image, um, upward gradients, so many of them. But I'll just show you that one. And that map isn't really the true picture of, um, of what we had. That's just a reconstructed map for public use. You see the detail there of massive dikes from moving um, from Freetown area right down to the Liberian border. And these were picked based on polarity and orientation. The image you see in the middle, I said in the conference that um, that looks like a gara. It's pretty much. Yeah, that's coming from the rudimentary sensor. It's used for geological mapping, and most of our geology, geological mapping, the little logical units were derived from that. 
It's also very useful for porphyry copper deposits. You can map those ones easily, gold and agriculture as well. 2004 geology, so it was on that basis that we are working. We wanted to see how those two images can transform this map. Fusing inside is the new geology after extracting data from figure one and figure two. So you now see the 2004 geology with what we have currently, 2020. Mark difference. A lot of structures here, additional units, and uh, part of it. That's the surface geology. And this is the basement. Remember I said where the basement meets the surface, um, it's 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 basement on the on the on the left, then on the right, it's surface on the on, on, on the left, then on the right is, is the basement. So you can see where this arrow is moving around, and it was so difficult to understand. Now that we know exactly what's underneath, so this and um, that's just the basis of what we are trying to focus at, and um, knowing exactly what's um, what's panning underneath the ground. We also had the opportunity to have three D um, modeling. You cannot just be focusing on the surface without knowing what the distribution is like underneath the ground. So you see the um, the pinkish patch going right down underneath there. It's um it's a three dimensional target, magnetic target, and uh, some part in the southeast. So that's the cross section of the um, the back the Bangla Hills. Bangla complex, Akalik complex. Uh, we did Voxy for the whole of the country. We did for 10, 10 areas. But as things were progressing and we started seeing some results, we requested to have um, 17 more areas. So we have 17 more areas within um, in the country at different regions. In fact, almost all regions have some Voxy things. These are um, magnetic bodies that overlay exactly on notable geology. Land use. Um, the data was not only collected for geology, it was also collected for other, other areas. That's Freetown, the Freetown layered complex. You can see that it's um, almost 95% on, on hilly ground. For those who are so adamant in building up, up um, in mountainous areas, there's an effect to that. Here has a lot of rainfall, and when it rains, uh, consistently if it goes on the on the on the layered complex, layered complex is layered because it's um, layering. There are different layers piling up, so it has a tendency of slipping away, and that's one of the reasons that caused the the um, the landslide some time ago. So you can see that Freetown is it's, um, it's very hilly, it's mountainous, and just along right down to the south of that tail, and uh, coming back to the road towards Waterloo and back, it's flat. So you can use the digital terrain model to do um, land planning, and if you want to build airports, if you want to build railway lines, and you want, you want to have massive infrastructure, yes. But not for these makeshift structures, not for smaller, smaller buildings. You can also use the data for environmental and uh, agricultural management. Um, the radio metric is very good for agricultural man management um, practices. You can use that. Geotechnical reasons. Um, one of our companies. Um, in the east is currently struggling with um, water um, in their underground pits. 
So something like that is um, is is very good for them. Um, they are requesting for the data as soon as we we are able to start pushing out and for the public, they will be the first people to to actually um, acquire because that's what they're just waiting for. They wanted to know what's the the um, what what features are within that particular area that is causing this um, oozing of water um, excessively. So I think this is my last slide. I think I'm going to call my colleague Emmanuel to take up um, from where. <laughs> Thank you very much, Joseph. I think I'll just build on where Joseph stopped. We live in the fourth industrial revolution, wherein user expectation about data and information is very massive. I think you want to go? Can you go back? All right. I'll pick it up from there. First of all, we want information or data to be available in digital format. Joseph showed us lots of historic data, most of which have been in paper-based format. In 2015-16, we started a process of digitizing some of those information for our own needs. Uh, so what we have there is that process started. But beyond that, users want information and data to be available everywhere. They want as well that that information or data is available on different devices so that they can access those devices. Most times we interact nowadays with our mobile phones a lot more than what we do with computers. When people want information, they are very impatient. They want it instantly. So user needs are now that I don't need to come all the way from the UK to access information in Freetown. You want to access that instantly and immediately, of course. They want the information to be reliable. They want it accurate. They want it complete so that it meets their needs. And nowadays, we're talking about open data. They want it free. So for this purpose, we had all of these considerations while planning how to manage, use, and disseminate the airborne geophysical data but of course, beyond that, other forms of data that we also have in-house. So the system we put together is an enterprise geoscientific information management system. It is a huge architecture comprising two uh, proprietary enterprise mm -hmm. applications. But of course, I will not bother you about what's down there. We'll just talk about the user end of things. Uh, what's down there is not for this audience, and I think it's, in most cases it's not for many audiences. So what we have is now the information we've put, the system we've put in place, you're able to access that information on your desktop, on laptop computers, and of course on mobile devices. So we've put together a geoscience data portal, and I've provided, what you see up there is a continuous link, mind you, no space. That's where you can get the front-facing public information. When you log on to that URL, you see right at the top, this is what you see, this is the screen you see. This particular one is currently open. You're free to type in now and go on there and see what we have. Can you take up the next? So when you log on, that, go back. When you click to close that splash screen there, you can actually query that information based on your needs on the other side, on the far left hand side. So when you click search at the bottom, then you get to this point. So once you are there, you're free to navigate, to turn on what layers you want to turn on, and of course, you can download 
and create a map of this on the site and download that map for your needs. If you want the raw data, the actual data behind this map, you can actually also, you know, play around with it and download that information and have access to it. So that's how it is. But this is just a small area of interest that we've put out there. There was a slide Joseph showed you, which is exactly this one. This is a low resolution imagery. This is just for public use. The high resolution imagery, which we have, or information which we have for the entire country, has been put into three small areas of interest. So if you log on, you will see exactly three areas of interest. One is Kwaidu. And the Kwaidu data is exactly the same resolution or high quality as the entire nationwide data. But we've just clipped a small portion of that. So you can play around with it to know exactly how the quality of the data is. Kwaidu in particular, if you're interested in knowing how the data responded to diamond prospectivity, for instance. Then we chose also um, Tonkolili to present a small portion of that data if you want to play around with it to see how it uh, presented information relevant to iron ore. Then I think there is a third, which is Nimini, and that is specifically for gold prospectivity. So feel free to go on there. You have the URL, share it, publish it, and then encourage people to play around with it. If you need further information, we are always open. Our doors are always open. We can provide further guidance and further information on this. Um, so please, go ahead, play with it, share, download, and disseminate. So I'll leave at this point and encourage team to talk about how we want to market or what are the marketing plans on this. Deputy Minister, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming along this afternoon. It's a great pleasure for me to be back in Freetown. I've been working with the team at NMA for the last couple of years uh, to do the uh, technical quality control and supervision of this airborne survey. And it really is a fantastic data set. Uh, my company has been working as uh, geophysical consultants for over 20 years. We've done, uh, we, we've, uh, uh, done QC on, on, on surveys across the globe. And this really is one of the best data sets that we've ever seen. I think as Sierra Leoneans, you can be very proud of what's been achieved. Uh, obviously, we're keen to share this information with people. Uh, as Joseph has, uh, and, and Emmanuel have pointed out, we know that Sierra Leone has vast mineral potential. The difficulty is we're not sure where that mineral potential is located, how much potential there is, what commodities they have. We're right on the edge of a new era in geological exploration. For years, decades, maybe centuries, we've prospected for gold, we've prospected for iron, we've prospected for copper. Now, with, as we move into a low-carbon economy globally, the world is hungry for more exotic minerals that have not been discovered before, but may very well be present here in Sierra Leone. I'm talking about things like rare earth elements. I'm talking about things like battery metals to power our electric vehicles. I'm talking about elements that can be used for medical research, for wind turbine generation, for so photovoltaic cells. As we move into the next century and as we move ahead with the low-carbon economy, these minerals are going to be essential for all of us. And Sierra Leone potentially is an extremely strong position to deliver these minerals, not just here in, within the country, but globally. So in order to know what mineral potential we have, we need a map the geology map, the geology map that shows us where the different rock types are, what those rock types may host. And in order to get to the geology map, we need the geophysical survey. So the reason that we flew this geophysical survey, in essence, was, as Joseph has pointed out, to get an improved geology map so that we know where the minerals are and we know what potential we have. Not just for minerals that people have been mining for hundreds of years, but for brand new minerals that potentially have never been seen before, that the world can come to Sierra Leone and find minerals for their everyday needs. So we want to share this information. Some of the information, as Emmanuel has pointed out, is freely available through the online portal. 
some of the information we're charging for. It is not our intention to recoup the cost of the airborne survey. The airborne survey cost over $6 million. Uh, it is not our intention to recoup that. But we're putting a price on some of the data, firstly to remind people of the value of that data, secondly to discourage time wasters. We want serious, credible investors in Sierra Leone. And thirdly, to generate a small amount of revenue for, for the NMA and other agencies to do more detailed research. This is just the beginning of our journey. The geophysics is the first layer. Now we need to dig into that layer. And this is a 20-year project. This is a generational data set. In 20 years, 30 years' time, our children will be using this, this data set to make economic decisions. So you're in a strong position. But the much work remains to be done. So if we can just go to my slides, thank you, and if you could please... Um, what we've done is there's a vast number of, of uh, survey deliverables that have been provided. Uh, and we are, we've decided to segment those into four categories, four tiers. The national, the sheet tier, and then the blocks and microblocks. The national coverage, of course, covers the whole country. And what we're planning to do is for people who purchase the national data set, we will provide them with the entire database of products that have been supplied for this survey. On the sheet tier, Joseph put up the 10 sheets, Magbaraka, uh, Daru, uh, Freetown, and etc. And so there are individual products, subsets of the national data set that have been designed for those blocks. So, so sorry, those sheets. Those, in, those information will be provided for the sheet. So the yellow blocks here are provided for the sheet level data tier. But some people will not want to spend either that money or have interest in such a large portion of Sierra Leone. And so for that reason, we're also releasing the data on a block basis. A block is 2,500 square kilometers, so typically 50 by 50 kilometers. And a micro block, which is 10 by 10 kilometers, 100 square kilometers. That's how we're planning to release the data. If I could have the next slide. And these are the pricings for the data. This will be up on the website by the end of the week, so you're welcome to visit the NMA website for your reference. What we've done, the more data that you purchase, clearly the, the lower the unit price. So if you buy the whole country, $100,000. That's a lot of money to you and to me, but to an international explorer coming into Sierra Leone, it's not a major concern. We want to put the data price at a price that is reasonable, but that always is, also encourages serious investors, serious explorers. For the sheet level, you may have noticed from Joseph's presentation that the different sheets had different amounts of coverage. Some were completely covered, some only had a small portion. So it's not fair to charge the same for every sheet. For the sheets that have full coverage, we've used Magbaraka as a baseline, approximately $24,000. Uh, sorry, $25,000 here for Magbaraka. For the smaller sheets, if you're only interested in the Freetown sheet, $5,000. Again, for an exploration company, they will spend that in a week on, ex on, on field exploration. So it's not a big cost. At the block level, for $10,000, you get a piece of, of the, the core geophysical grids. We're not selling all of the products at the block and the micro block level, but the core geophysical grids, if you have a good geophysical consultant, they can work up most of the other products from those core geophysical grids. And that is for $10,000. Or the micro block, perhaps for somebody who is in academia, we can uh, provide that to you for $1,000. So very, very low price, almost uh, nominal price. And what we want to do, we want to encourage people to come and talk to the NMA, to engage with us. We need to learn from the exploration community as well as them engaging with us. But what we don't want to do is for international explorers to come into Sierra Leone, to take the data, to take the minerals, and to go back to their countries. We want to keep the expertise in Sierra Leone. We want to keep the opportunities in Sierra Leone. We want to keep the revenue in Sierra Leone. So that's what we've decided to do. Could you go to the next slide, please? I think there may be one more. I'm just going to give you some examples, and these are detailed examples from the Koidu area, is the one I've selected. So Koidu, as many of us know, uh, very famous for world-class diamonds. And this is the uh, national grid that you can download from the website. You can go today at your lunch break, after we finish this press briefing, and you can download this data. But it's not complete. Next slide, please. This is the detail that you get from the purchased products. This is great for regional mapping, maybe to put on the wall of His Excellency the President. I hope that there will be a geological map there. But it's not useful for geological exploration particularly. What we need is this level of detail. 
And that's what you get with the full resolution data. Next slide, please. This is the one that uh, uh, Joseph likes. The, what's the uh, uh, Kigara? Gara. Gara, yes. Uh, a small section of the, the Gara. Again, it, it looks pretty, but you can't see very much. Next slide, please. Wow. Okay, as a geoscientist, I just want to pick up my pen or my mouse and start drawing structures on here because it's so interpretable. And this is telling me about the different geology, the different drainage, the different structures, the different landforms, the different soil types, not just for mining, but for infrastructure planning, for agriculture, for environmental applications, for geohazards. We all know about landslides in Sierra Leone. Let's try and reduce our landslides. Yeah, there's so many applications of this data set. Next slide, please. And I think that's finished. But as with the others, I'm here for the rest of the week. Very happy to take questions now from the floor or right into the NMA. We want to stay engaged with you. Uh, this is a, a survey for the people of Sierra Leone. We want to hear from you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. Um, before I give the floor to the acting director of information, so take us through the Q&A and perhaps entertain any comments relating to the presentation. I just want to note that an important component of this is perhaps the World Bank component, that funding for this was made possible through the vehicle of the World Bank, and we have the, is it the Extractive Industries Technical uh, Assistance Project. The coordinator for that project is here as well. So for our friends in the media who may be interested in that part as well, let us know that the funding component of this, um, the person who heads or leads that um, project from the World Bank is also here with us. I, I just want to say before I bring in Mr. Ture, that this presentation is something all of us as Sierra Leoneans would be connected to. We, not, we are not necessarily miners, we may not have any interest in, in minerals as a business, but the fact that this touches and concerns the land in Sierra Leone. And I am particularly thrilled um, as they were going through the socioeconomic relevance of all of this, talking about how important this is, not just for the scope of mining and minerals, but also for urban planning, for agriculture, for land use, etc., etc. We're very, very much delighted to hear this. And that seem, this seems to be an aggregation as well especially when they noted um, what the Council of Geosciences did in 2004, which may have informed and advised a geophysical survey. So these are interesting times we live in, and no matter how highly technical this presentation might have been, I find tremendous comfort in the fact that our friends in the media, you are specialists in making sure that you convey the simplified version of what appears to be a highly technical presentation so our people would have a very good appreciation of what this is all about and what we should all do to support the National Minerals Agency and the Geological Survey to make sure that Sierra Leone gets it right. So I just um, thought that those were important statements to make before I bring in Mr. Ture to coordinate the Q&A. Thank you very much, uh, for our able, esteemed um, Deputy Minister of Information. I think this brings me to the last area you touched on, specialization. Specialization. And part of our proposal here is in, at the ministry is to work with SLAGE for specialized courses in areas of geology, etc. So most of the terminology is used here, uh, you can be able to comprehend. But however, I think making it very simple somehow, I think uh, we've got a, an understanding about the significance of uh, the, the geological survey, that it's not only, I think I've also learned from that, not only for agri um, mining purposes or minerals, but it's also geared towards infrastructural development, agriculture, water sanitation, etc. And from good urban planning for those of us that are uh, uh, doing um, sustainable development study, you see exactly how essential it is. So now I open the floor for questions. The normal routine, your name, 
in the media institution and you ask your question. Yes, please. Yes, there's somebody there. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Prince Koka and I'm the editor for the Whispers newspaper. I just want to say I was particularly heartened hearing of the opportunities and uh, all the benefits that we will be enjoying. But as you speak, my Edward was thinking of data protection. Um, I'm being mindful of that. Data protection. I mean, any other questions? Yes. Good afternoon. The man's here. Editor for the I'm I'm grateful to be part of this press conference. It's a uh, sweet uh, words coming from the experts. How effective uh, is the enemy set to implement this uh, project? Questions? Okay, whilst we're thinking of uh, questions, I think the enemy, from where you are, you can see that you right? Thank you very much for the questions. Um, as far as um, <coughs> data protection is concerned, I can assure you that um, this data is one of the most secure in the country. Um, we have um, the which is in a secure vault. I'm not going to tell you where it is. And even when you want to get it online, you need um, specific codes and passwords. And I can assure you that even within the NMA, very few of us have that code and password. So it's extremely secure. And um, that is on purpose because we want people who really need it to buy it. So we can't make it free of charge to everybody. As far as um, if the enemy is ready to implement this project, of course, um, the completion of the Diagon the Physical Survey is an indication of how effective the enemy is. This program was sponsored by the World Bank, but then it was based on ideas generated within the enemy. Like, for example, the um, survey was designed by a company, but then a South African company, but then most of the ideas came from our director of the theological survey here, Mr. Prince Coffey, it's because um, we told them exactly what we want. So the enemy is prepared. And going on further, that's why we have launched our strategic plan. So our strategic plan will operationalize all what you had today. So the enemy is extremely prepared. If I could just add to that, this microphone. If I could just add to that from an external perspective, we've been very impressed on this project at the level both of data security and also of counterpart training. Um, thank you. Throughout the uh, period of data acquisition, which lasted best part of a year, it was a six month survey campaign that we had to take a break during the wet season. The data was uploaded by the contractor to a secure FTP site. Um, my colleagues and I had access, in fact it was only me that had access to the, uh, the security TV site from our end, and during that time period NMA itself did not have access to the data, so the integrity was complete. Following that we've been extremely careful to preserve the data security throughout. Very few people, as, as uh, the deputy director has intimated, had access to those data, and we continue to guide it carefully. It's essential, it's a national asset. It doesn't belong to NMA belongs to Sierra Leone, and so we've got that very carefully. On the point of capability, and again, um, uh, Dr. Kelvin has, has highlighted this, there was a strong component within the initial bid for counterpart training, both from the contractor and from ourselves as QC, QAQC. Mm -hmm. It was counterpart training, we came into free time, most recently we did it at the session online, of course, because of COVID, but other than that, we came into free time, we shared some of our knowledge, uh, the staff of NMA remained engaged, and this is what we want. We want to build a legacy of technical expertise in the country. Um, there's no merit to people coming in from abroad and then disappearing with the knowledge again. We want to build a, 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 a local capability. Um, and, and certainly my impression from having worked many jobs over many years is that anyone is serious about that. Right, more questions? Yes, there's somebody at the back here. My name 
inside Jackson Island Protein Force to take care of one to you. My question has to do with uh, the coordination with ministry, agency, and department in terms of using this data so that it will affect the lives of the I'm trying to say that uh, in terms of coordination with ministry, department, and agency, using the data so that it, it will reflect in the lives of civilians. And I was fortunate to be part of the launching of Utumani. Again, one of the speakers made mention of support from the government. I think this is not the end of this particular process, gathering the data and then from their implementation. So I want to know what's the next step. After and, uh, the, the, the survey, we now have the data. What is going to be the next step of the ministry and the agency? OK. I see somebody at the back, too. Yeah, morning, for our information. Um, thank you. Um, two things. One, the, the cash flow. Yeah, as much as we, we've seen the presentation, everything is good, but I'm um, concerned. How do we track the cash flow? Um, for instance, somebody paid for either a lot, slot, or whatever. How do we track as a nation? Going to the fact this data is owned by the citizens. That's one and two. Um, away from this all, um, enemy, what's the present situation of Sega the time? We are concerned. Thank you. Okay, more questions? All right, uh, you may recall from the notification I sent out to you. Uh, or a lot, you know, we were looking at our midterm development plan or strategy in the country, how this survey can enhance. And then part of it, if you were following just as a summary, it, it will enhance the agricultural sector, I mean, talking in terms of uh, collaboration with other MBAs in terms of water sanitation, uh, infrastructure and development works, etc. Uh, this is all geared towards our midterm development. Um, what I would like to ask before uh, the chair responses or the deputy director responses uh, to the questions is about the area of popularization because what we're speaking here are technical terms and the man there in the village for whom this has been done, I mean, the last reunion out there, they wish to know more about this in our local language. So, what strategy is there that we put in place to the view that? There may be common understanding of those out there like you did before the exercise. You educated Sierra Leoneans about if you see the plane, don't be scared, it's all about this. But how do we inform them about the outcome uh, in terms of collaboration with the other ministries uh, of educating our people out there? What strategy have we put in place on modalities after this? Just to add to what my brother asked you, what next? You know, popularize the concept. Um, thank you, Mr. Ture, for that last bit. Um, I think we can dispense with that last bit and perhaps um, um, see how the Ministry of Information and Communications could collaborate with mm -hmm. NMA um, and, and formulate PR around this. I know you're very passionate about this, and we can now make some propositions on a multi channel approach so that the people could. So uh, we could do like a simple QA, we could do a jingle in Creole English and some key languages. See how we could go nationwide. But let's have a bilateral one. Yes, um, thank you very much for the set of questions. Um, uh, the first one was um, somebody wants to know how we're going to collaborate with other ministries. Um, the geophysical data belongs to the people of Sierra Leone. And um, the Sierra Leone Medium Term National Development Plan has several goals for various ministries. Um, starting if any one of the various ministries has a defined goal as to why they need the data. I am starting the Ministry of the Minerals, Resources, and the NMA will consider that. But um, mm -hmm. that um, we'll, have, we'll have to leave for now because we we'll have to be on, um, based on discussion and the needs. We we'll have to be certain that we really have you know, good needs for it that will benefit the people of Australia. But I don't think that will be the support from the government is in no doubt. The government has been with the enemy and the mineral 
resources because uh, they are aware of the potential of the sector to change the lives of the ordinary civilians. So we do have their support. The next steps are, for example, we want to make this available to people not only in Sierra Leone but around the world. So anyone can purchase the data now. Further to that, we are planning on follow-up the surveys, the geochemical survey, the geological survey, and several areas will be selected for an airborne electromagnetic survey. So um, as Tim demonstrated, this is just the start. There is so much that has to be done. As far as the cash flow is concerned, uh, I would like to say the enemy does not handle money. What we do is provide order to pay and all the money is paid to the NRA. And even though the money goes to the NRA, government is in control. So tracking cash flow won't be a problem. Um, for Sierra, which I, um, we are optimistic that within the six month period, both we and by we, I mean the ministry, the NMA, and Sierra, which I, will be able to resolve whatever problems they are going through, and the operations will continue. On that note, I think uh, no more questions, so I um, want to thank you all and implore colleagues of the front desk I think we'll have to decide with uh, my deputy minister here whether we'll pull the first briefing on Wednesday or Thursday because slide will be having their programs next week. So but we'll get back to you whether there is need to have the press brief on Thursday, uh, which is a traveling day, likely. But uh, on that, I want to say thanks very much to you all for coming, and we'll meet next week. So we'll invite now our panelists here for a group photo for the press. Thank you very much.